to the Stephen Knight Show. Hope you're having a great Monday. Hopefully we'll make it a little bit better for you. Uh, tonight we are back with the latest in sports, fashion, movie reviews, and the best indie music out there. Now if you remember last week we welcomed Corn Rankin. She is the uh, president of the Legacy Republican Alliance and she was the former director of African Americans for Trump back in 2016. Well we started our kind of heated conversation last week and we're going to continue part two tonight. Then later on the show, we welcome uh, Fred Holman. Fred Holman, he's over at the FEH Online. It's an um, entertainment platform. They have music. They have other marketing services. You definitely want to learn, to learn more about the uh, the website and how you can become part of it. And of course, we're breaking down hot topics, talking about everything everyone's talking about. Find out why Kanye West almost walked away from hip-hop music. Find out after, this after he got saved, why he almost walked away. And then uh, Lori Harvey, she was arrested um, over the weekend, actually yesterday, for uh, attempted hit and run. And then find out what the police, police, female police did in front of uh, male police officers. There's one woman. She removed her tampon. It's a lot going on, but we'll be talking about all of it uh, in Hot Topics. I want to remind you, we're all over social media, Facebook, Twitter, Google+, Instagram, and of course, our official website, thestephenightshow.com. Check us out on Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, Spotify. Just go to our website, thestephenightshow.com. When we come back, the question of the day and hot topics. Right back after this. Just the other day, he turned and walked away Left you all alone, heart full of pain Never said goodbye, left you there to cry Broken down, standing in the rain, ayy But wipe all your tears up, ayy Cause I can't be saved up, ayy Go to embrace the pain, you know The hate game, you know It's gonna be okay I know we broke your heart, tears rolling down your face Sure you're okay. You don't have to wait. I'ma save the day. 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 I'ma
I might not be the first to say this, but I want to be the best at my creation. Put me on your playlist. Intellect and East, but he's fitting the basics. Over vintage beats, relinquishing the origins of the culture. You don't have to say shit because you a vulture. And I'm a revolutionary. And I'm going to handle the biz from the label to the fiduciary. The results are in. Not guilty for telling the truth. My prediction is we will recoup the earth. And I know this because I'm a true visionary. Just want to let you fire your soul. Close your eyes, open your ears, and we expose truth and light across the globe. We the voice of the people, case you ain't know. Case who ain't know, case you ain't know. Case who ain't know, case they ain't know. In case you ain't know, in case they ain't know. In case you ain't know, man, I know. Just want to let you fire your soul. Close your eyes, open your ears, and we expose truth and light across the globe. We the voice of the people, case you ain't know. Case who ain't know, case you ain't know. Case who ain't know, case they ain't know. In case you ain't know, in case they ain't know. In case you ain't know, man, I know. Hi, this is Dr. Heavenly from Bravo TV's Marriage to Medicine, and you are listening to The Stephen Knight Show. Welcome back to The Stephen Knight Show. Ms. Parker, how's it going? Happy Monday. Happy Monday. A little tired, but I'm doing well. How are you? 
You know, I have to say, you know, typically me on Mondays, I don't get to the gym till the evening. But I went to the gym this morning, and I want to get at lunch, which never happens on Mondays. So I think I um I got enough sleep last night. But um, how was your <laughs> Right, right. I was surprised. <laughs> how was how was your weekend? It was great. Went to a Halloween party and had a great time. So, yeah. Um, and hung out with you guys a little bit yesterday. Ran errands and but had a great weekend. My weekends are always packed. And right. Busy, but they're yeah. always fun. Exactly. Yeah, I feel you. But my brother was in town. My big brother was in town from Jersey. Him and two of his friends, and so I hung out with them, and then. Ty, I'm home with Ty. His brother was in town, so I was for his birthday. So I was back and forth between the groups, but definitely a good weekend. And then I got to spend it with you and Fanon, uh last night, so that was cool. Mr. Chica Evans, how was your weekend? Weekend was awesome, brother. Uh, yes. Thank you for asking. I spent uh, most of it, uh, well, the first part of it, running around, running errands things I can't do during the week. Right. And then um, because it rained here on Sunday, it was a Netflix and chill type yeah. of day for me then. I yeah. feel you. I feel you. Well, um, before we get into the question of the day, I want to remind everyone we are still recognizing um, Breast Ca- Cancer Awareness Month. Definitely our prayer, thoughts and prayers are with everyone who's impacted. Um, and then I also want to remind you all that we are nominated for two ATL's Hottest Entertainment Awards. Um, you can go to atlshottest.com, or you can go to our website. There's a link there. But we're not nominated for Hottest Online Radio Show, the Stephen Knight Show, and then I'm nominated for Hottest Online Radio Host, Stephen Knight. So you can go to our website. We definitely appreciate your votes. All right, so the question of the day is, what's something you could eat every day? Ms. Parker. Um, that list is going to be very long. I eat vegetables <laughs> every day, anything carbs. Uh-huh. Don't do during the week. Right. By Friday, I'm visible. Mm-hmm. Um, I could eat probably. I could probably have wings every day. Yeah, that's what I said. If they were, if they were made differently, I could probably have some form of wings every day. Um, now I do have stuff that I eat every day, just about every day. Uh, I have eggs just about every day. Oh yeah. Um, I eat. If I don't have any mushrooms or, or avocado at home, I feel like I don't have groceries. Oh. <laughs> um, so I eat those pretty much every day. But a lot of things. What are on your list? I had wings and seafood as my main things. But there are some things I do eat most days, um, especially during the week when I'm trying to do right um, during the weekdays. Mm-hmm. What about you, Chike? Uh, um, the, the good answer would be some form of nut. Like I love peanuts and cashews. Oh, and yeah. I can eat almonds. I can eat that every day. Uh, that's a snack for me. But the bad thing would be, and I'm probably going to give them an endorsement by saying this, but lemon Oreos. I don't know oh, what the lemon Oreos. about them. Oh, yeah. They are crack. <laughs> <laughs> they are crack. And I can eat them every day. <laughs> that's interesting. It was interesting some of the comments I saw on my page. But tweet us at Stephen Knight Show SHO and let us know what is something you could eat every day. Well, share share some of them. What you, what it, what okay, let me share. I'll share some of the ones we had. Uh, let me pull up real quick. Here we go. Okay, so we had. Uh, well, I, some of them I can't say because it's inappropriate. <laughs> oh, um, wow. yeah. Oh wow! Really? Uh, <laughs> yes. Um, Kimberly uh, Faith Earls put macaroni and cheese. Um, uh, Jarrett Jarrett. I don't know how to pronounce his name. Derek, he, he's put chicken wings, fresh pineapples, fresh cherries, cotton candy. Uh, Roman put spaghetti. Um, Elizabeth Patterson put Reese's Buttercups. Someone put what well, we can't say. That's a good one. <laughs> uh-huh. Reese's Buttercups. So, well, people... It's so funny because as an adult, as an adult, I have never made spaghetti. Oh, I really? Spaghetti every, I mean, every week we have spaghetti. Uh-huh, uh-huh. We have to eat for a couple of days. Exactly. So we always had leftover spaghetti. We always had some kind of spaghetti in the refrigerator. I have never made spaghetti as an adult. <laughs> you spaghetti I out, huh? I had it as an adult, <laughs> um, but I was spaghetti out. But yeah. my friend Mel in Chicago, 
and instead of mac and cheese, they do spaghetti for a side. Yeah. Like holiday. Uh huh. Um, and their spaghetti is different. It's baked. So yeah. It's actually pretty good. It, it just has a different. I think I, I don't mind it because I don't have it that often, and then it's just different from what I grew up eating. So I don't yeah. really have it when I'm there. Um, and then they also use they use uh, uh, Italian sausage in their spaghetti instead of ground beef. Yeah, so, that's how, that's how my mom made it too. Yeah. That's how my mom would make yeah. it too. Uh huh. But we have a lot of people put tacos, people put uh, pasta or I rice. Ta- I think I eat tacos every day. I uh, Eric Lofton put uh, wings and tacos. We got a lot of pizza. A lot of people put pizza. Someone put green apples. Um, it said it's a Virgo thing. Uh, seafood, peanut butter, croissants and butter, ice cream, cold Reese's, tacos, Twizzlers, Twizzlers excuse me, pe- uh, pe- uh, peanut butter and jelly, Oreo cookies, bananas, and Itali- Italian food, corn, crabs, pizza, hot chips, pizza. Yeah, <laughs> stuff that kind of stuff. I, I, well, people, I guess people get hungry, huh? <laughs> <With that topic. laughs> but definitely tweet us and let us know what's something that you could eat every day. All right, so hot topic. So, um, so Kenan uh, Lowe, he is being just praised for pretty much stopping a school shooting. This actually happened uh, in 2018, but the video came out. I'm sorry, it happened earlier this year, but the video came out recently. So a student comes to school and he was dealing with some mental uh, illness issues. And he brought a gun to school. It was show, He was shown on the security cam. And so this gentleman, he was he's a coach there, uh, um, football coach. And a he coached something else, but anyway, he saw he saw the guy with the loaded gun, and he confronted him. And the main thing he wanted to do was when he realized it was a real gun, he took the gun from him. But then uh, another student, a t- teacher, came out and got the gun from him. And what he did was he embraced the student in his arms, and told him, "I'm here for you. It's gonna be okay." And the student broke down crying. Um, and so he's singing as a hero because he saved hundreds of, of lives that day. And so, um, this is all in Oregon at, um, at, uh, Park Rose High School in Oregon. But the student was taken into custody and he's faced some multiple charges, but they're not going to throw him in jail. They're going to, um, give him treatment for his mental health issues and help him move forward in life. Do you think, um... That was the right decision in terms of not necessarily what the teacher did, obviously the coach did, but the fact that he won't be facing any real time. It'll be really just treating his mental health issues. What are your thoughts on that, Ms. Parker? Yeah, I think, honestly, I think that's part of the issues, uh, the mental health reform that needs to happen is that, that they put people in jail. Right. That's part of the biggest reform, uh, reform uh, argument mm-hmm. is that you put people in jail and they come out, they come out worse. Yeah. Um. So... Treatment is the way to go when you're dealing with somebody who has mental issues and is to the point where um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a risk to other people and themselves is to treat them so they can get better. So when they are out, they'll be able to function and be um, safe with themselves and other people. So, yes, I think that's actually the best outcome that can come out of this situation. I agree. What about you, Chike? What are your thoughts? Um, I agree totally with Ms. Parker, but I will also add that when individuals are in that space, they're more than likely without hope. They don't have any hope. Mm-hmm. And hopefully someone out there who's in this mindset and is probably looking at this, it now gives them hope because this doesn't have to be the end. I don't have to do this. You know, there, is peop- there are people out there that will, you know, shelter me and take care of me if I just confess to someone what I'm feeling. Yeah. So it doesn't have to be the end of the road. It's just hope for other people out there that, there's help for you. I agree. And I think the the beauty in this story is they're not it's not another life wasted. They were able to defuse exactly. the situation and so hopefully he can go on, get the treatment he needs and become a a productive citizen in um, you know, in this country. Um but I'm just grateful that that, that coach was there. So sh- kudos to him, uh coach Lowe. Mm-hmm. All right, yes. so and then if you I'm sorry, Stephen, yeah. but just just a reminder, some people out here want to put guns in the teacher's hands. Yeah. This is a clear situation where that is not needed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Not needed. Yep. All right, so The Rock is, a port, is reporting that um, 
it's a publication that a woman named Natalie Sims. She's in San Antonio, San Antonio, Texas. She was recently awarded judgment for two hundred five thousand dollars after a judge uh, sided with her in this case. So back in two thousand sixteen, August two thousand sixteen, she was sitting on the curb waiting for her boyfriend. While she, and she was on the phone. While she was on the phone, she was approached by a group of male police officers. They asked if they could search her, and she agreed to let them because she was fearful that she could be killed. You know, because all the all the killings were seen on TV. So a short time after, a female officer came to the scene, Officer Wilson, and she proceeded to conduct a um, a body search, and she ended up removing physically removing the tampon out of the young lady's vagina. Um, oh wow! Uh huh. And she did it. She did it in front of everyone. And so they said oh in, in Texas, the law says that it's illegal to do a strip search on a person or property without consent of or a warrant. And the searches, the body cavity search must be conducted, must be done outside of public view. So Wilson, apparently she didn't, the officer didn't care. And uh, when she opened up the woman's pants, she put a flashlight to her vagina before, before removing the tampon. And the woman asked her, why are you doing this? And she said, because look, it was stuffed. The first humiliation came because she did that again in front of everyone, including the male officer standing nearby. Do you oh think that two hundred five thousand dollars was enough, Miss Parker? Two hundred five thousand. Well, that's something that she has to determine. That's something that we can't determine whether or not it was enough. But these police officers are out of control. Mm-hmm. Uh, at what level of acceptance does she, does she think that was okay? This is what I always say. I think police officers are people who always felt powerless in their lives. And they want to be officers because they want to feel power. And this is across all boards. Women, gender doesn't matter, race doesn't matter, because I know some, some black cops that are jerks too. And I think what it is is a power trip. Once they get accepted, now that we've done, there aren't good officers who's doing a job for good reasons, but a lot of those officers are people who, had, who were bullied in school, had no power, feel powerless in their own lives. And once they've been given the badge, that, the fact that she thought that was okay, that right. she told you right there was a problem thing. Mm-hmm. It had nothing to do with, with whether or not there was a crime being committed. She wanted to show and prove to whoever was around that she had the power to do that. Mm-hmm. And she, she she needed to be not just fired, but somehow some charges need to be brought against her because that's just ridiculous. What you thought she got? I, I'm still astonished. I can't believe that that's right. real. Right. That is crazy. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Crazy. How do you even get that decision? Right, right. You know, and I think it goes back to what we talked about last week about the um, lack of proper training. Um, and then also, I think that, you know, police officers don't make a lot of money in the first place. And so sometimes I think they feel devalued. And so their way of beating on their chest is by doing things like this, overstepping their boundaries. And I think it needs to go to them being paid. Uh, to serve as well as the proper training because this police officer should have known that was against the law to do that that way and the fact that she didn't know that that's a problem and it represents I'm, I'm, that uh that that district i'm sorry um i in, in thinking about this and mulling this over more because i was in shock when you came around to uh-huh. me the first time yep. i would bring her up on sexual charges she would go to jail as a sex offender hmm. That's yeah. too much. You're doing too much. It's out of line. Completely out of line. All right, so um, all of this year, you know, Kanye West, he's been on this spiritual journey. Um, you know, he has the huge popular Sunday service sessions where he features secular and gospel songs to spread the, spread his message. Well, apparently, um, he thought about quitting uh, hip-hop music, according to his pastor, Adam Tyson, who recently did an interview he said that um, Yeezy wanted to leave hip hop game for good because he felt like he was producing the devil's music. Um, XXL magazine's reporting this. Once Kanye became saved, he uh, reportedly, um, you know, again wanted to abandon. It, but Tyson, the pastor, convinced him not to. Kanye stated that his return to Christianity was due to uh, due to a feeling, you know, of when he was chasing fame. In the music industry, along with the sins that came with that, um, his sentiments aren't really that surprising to some because he often rapped about the struggles of dealing with the temptation of fame. 
do you see where he's coming from, or do you? Where do you what do you think about this, Miss Parker? I think that's a personal journey. I think Kanye is on a personal journey to find peace. He just happened to be a public person. Mm-hmm. Um, I think we should stay out of it and allow the man to go through his process. And I know he has said some things recently that it, it, the men struggles with mental illness, depression, suicidal uh, thoughts. He needs to be left alone so he can go through his process of healing, however that happens. If it's through Jesus, great. If it's through meditation, great. If it's through whatever form that brings him healing, he needs to do that. He's rich. He doesn't need the money from from uh from secular music. He can do whatever he wants. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think that he has to make you know secular music in order for him to continue his um you know anything left for him to prove. I think he's produced and and made some some music that's gonna last and and you know and it sold well and made him a legend of who he is as far as an artist. Um, but I think I think overanalyzing everything that he does and he's always in the media about what he says. That's such a personal journey because I've gone through a, a, my own personal journey of healing, and it's so personal, and I, I could not imagine doing that in public and always being asked about it. He mm. needs to be left alone so he can process things, but I also think, too, he's addicted to some, some form of the attention because he's always had it, and he's had it for years now. So removing yourself from that is going to be challenging, but, but I think the media needs to just stop speculating and asking him questions, just let the man go through his healing process, however that happens. Okay, check out what are your thoughts. Because I'd rather see him. I'm sorry, I'd rather see him in a in a space that he has kids and little kids. Right. And if you guys imagine, at one point he was losing it in the public eye, like mm-hmm. just in front of our eyes, he was he he had he had a breakdown, a few breakdowns, and he seemed to be doing better. He seemed to be you know uh, in better spirits and a little happier, a little bit healthier each time. So you know, just let him go through his process. I think. Okay. Okay. Check out. Um, I don't want to seem negative, um, but I don't care. Like, I, I honestly, what I want for Kanye as a human being is go on a pilgrimage where you disappear. The next time we see you, you should have, like, dreadlocks mm-hmm. down to your waist. You should have a long, furry. You should be wiser. You should have a, a vast amount more knowledge. Um, maybe another kid that we didn't know about. I just need you to step away. Just go away for a minute and be quiet yeah. and find it. Yeah. And then come back and tell us what you learned. Right. How about that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I do think it is because um, his past is the one that, that did this interview. And I think it is it is interesting here because Kanye does, although he you know he's a public figure, he has a lot of fans who follow him and a lot of people who are chasing fame. And so if, if Kanye is saying that you know, he felt like, you know, he's doing the devil's work or whatever and the things he had to do to chase fame. I think that's a way of getting people who everyone's out here trying to do the stuff on social media on IG and all that to get fame. And there's another side to it. So I think that, it, you know, it's a conversation to have. But I do agree with letting him deal with his personal things uh, privately. All right. So um, Lori Harvey, she um, was arrested um, yesterday. So. Apparently, she was texting and driving, and she ran into another vehicle, causing her car, Lori's car, to flip over. And this is in Beverly Hills. And according to uh, reports, the other driver came and helped her get out the car, and that's when she tried to flee the scene. According to the outlet Beverly Hills, um, this is OK Magazine, Beverly Hills police said that she was arrested on uh, two counts, misdemeanor, hit and run, and delaying a police investigation. This is around 944. 48 last night. Um, but after they got her, they, they arrested her with those two charges and they released her on the scene. She was not booked and she identified herself properly and signed a written promise to appear in court. And they don't believe that she was on any, um, any, uh, you know, under any influence of anything. What do you, what do you think about that? Cause you know, I think it all comes down to the text and the driving uh, situation. What are your thoughts on that? Ms. Parker? You, you know, with the whole texting and driving situation, I am mindful of that, and, and I do ride with a lot of people who text and drive. Mm-hmm. Um, I would say my, my behavior that I need to change is I do text at the light, but I need to just stop texting, period. But there are people who text and drive, including yourself, Mr. Knight. Well, Mr. Um, Knight don't do it anymore. <laughs> Trust me. He, I don't do it anymore. <laughs> and, I, and I'll tell you why when you finish. I have, I have, I'll give you that. I haven't, I haven't ran the car with you, yeah. so you're probably right. Uh-huh. Um, but I think that we need to be more mindful of that. But if if you are doing that and something happens, right? I just 
especially if, you, if they're saying she wasn't under any influences, uh-huh. why would you not stop? You know what I mean? Why would you not do the right thing? Because now you're going to be in more trouble because now you have hit and run. Right. Right. It's not, just, it's not just a car accident where you can just get your insurance and they first get there. Uh-huh. Now it's a legal issue. Yeah. Um, so I just don't know where that decision came from. I, it's hard for me to believe that she was sober and did that. No sober person will get in an accident and leave because mm-hmm. it's like you 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 rather deal with that as a, as a person to person. Get your insurance. I get my insurance. The cops come and write, write a report. Then you go to court. Now you have a criminal charge. Right. Yeah. That's true. Right here run. So I. Yeah, I don't. I don't believe the whole. We don't think she was on Something was going on with her that she had to go home and not face the fact that she just hit somebody. Mm-hmm. Chica, I'm backing Miss Parker up on this one because if you really break it down, you really think about it. You have money. You can always throw money at the situation. Yeah. Was it that bad that you got into an accident over a text message? What were they really going to do to you? Mm-hmm. Nothing. Because she saw that car. But you ran. It's flipped over. So yeah. you made it much bigger than what it was. That's true. Mm-hmm. You ran for a reason. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, the reason why I stopped texting drivers is because I've had a few close calls. And I was thinking about one day, and I actually, this didn't happen to me, but I was thinking about, like, when I come in my neighborhood, um, there's a, there's a, there are two sharp c- turns. And I've had people almost hit me before when I was out walking, and I almost hit people too. And I was just imagine, what if I was texting and driving? And I run into someone and, you know, it's like, it's already, it's already sketchy coming around there paying attention. <laughs> you know what I mean? So just imagine if I'm distracted. So that's one reason why I stopped texting, driving. And, and I do, I am guilty of, if I'm at a light, um, then I, I'll check it. But in terms of just driving down the street, I just, I'm just put it in the console and be done with it because it's not worth it. It's not worth it. All right. So our last topic, um, so it's been 23 years since uh, one of the greatest rappers of all time, Tupac Shakur, passed away at the young age of 25. But he recently made headlines, according to TMZ, for being arrested for possession of meth. Of meth, everyone's kind of scratching their head. Turns out there's this 20 year old Caucasian gentleman who lives in Tennessee, and his name is Tupac Shakur. And so he was uh, arrested, allegedly for threatening the local police with a knife. Officers reportedly responded to a call regarding the 40-year-old man due to multiple warrants out for his arrest. Upon trying to detain him, he turned towards the officers with a blade in his hand. Shakur was promptly arrested, and when the cops uh, searched him, they found evidence of drugs, including a syringe and multiple bags of meth. What do you think? Right. So he changed his name, but that's his real name. That's his name. I'm done. I, I have nothing else. <laughs> that's his name. That's his name. Chica, any thoughts? Um, that's the only reason that this is news because right. he has that name. Uh huh. Yeah. They could have left that one alone for yeah, real. Right. Like, seriously. Right. Well, that's hot topic, y'all. <laughs> Miss Parker, thank you so much for joining us tonight. I hope you have a great week. And uh, Chica, I'll see you in movie reviews. Bye, Miss Parker. Well, so when we come back, uh, this is part two of my interview with Corin Rankin. Right back after this. Baby, we can make that happen. I know you're 
Looking at me, I see the signs You look like you're single and just about ready to be mine So, girl, it ain't no problem Baby, girl, it ain't no problem, problem, ayy No, I ain't looking for love Glad you feel the same, cause we on both been through enough But I still want you, girl, you know I don't ever bluff We can make love tonight, tomorrow, keep it, I was up, yeah You gon' like it, just roll with it Hit my phone when you is home alone with it It ain't a question, you know that I'm gon' come with it Probably help you with a couple new tones with it, ayy We can do this right here I don't use and tell, so you gonna benefit Slide it on the couch, then we take it to the bed Keep it moving like what we said, oh, oh Staying classified We're helping each other, keep each other satisfied, ayy Between us two, we gon' keep on doing You single and just by ready to be mine So, girl, it ain't no problem Baby, girl, it ain't no problem Just wanna have fun Well, girl, it ain't no problem No, it ain't no problem If it's only for the ones And we can make that happen Baby, we can make that happen I know you're feeling me, I see the signs You look like you single and just by ready to be mine So, girl, it ain't no problem Baby, girl, it ain't no problem, problem, hey Nothing to my name, just problems But I never broke my promise yeah. And now it's too late to cut my losses I should just be honest yeah. Start living so modest yeah. My music becomes so heartless uh. When I got more bills than Congress I tried my hands at the factory But my old life was still after me Made myself a salary But honestly wasn't happy Holy moly how times change Your grandson's got a little fame My hometown became my label And these backwoods don't have dreams Dreams. Irreplaceable, cause there is no certain second yeah, yeah. The realest in these streets, but still an urban legend I'm a lifetime in the making, y'all still in college training Smoking and gaming, with dreams of being famous And I don't even want it, that's the sad thing, the sad thing. I just want money to fill my gas tank, gas tank. I just want to sell dollar mixtapes mix tapes. I don't want to be old just to have things. have things I can only speak for myself Am I the realest one left? I can only, I can only speak It's not cool, cool, cool The things I do, do, do Trying to break, break through But I have to, to Cause I do it all alone Labels like my style, so they steal it for their own. I don't rap anymore, I preach. Uh, Sell CDs and pack seats. Uh, my potential will never be reached. Never. I don't fit on that Vivo screen. And I know it's hard to believe yeah. that I came from Tennessee. I'm sorry. But you see them a raccoon tail. You do. Or you hear it on Fox 17. My life story's a page turner. I got songs on the back burner. You made the news for sports while well, I was on the news for murder. Enjoy your white gauges. Enjoy your sailor hats. Enjoy, Enjoy your skinny jeans. And non-team snapbacks uh. Yo 80s leather jackets Nintendo backpacks What's up, baby? Raccoon tails Corvettes and Pontiacs I don't care If I hit my fans targeted I don't care If I can't be marketed I see the locals And I've came to the conclusion They can say they don't know me Thanks. But I'm the biggest influence uh. I was hated by this whole town Then came my solution I'll never change myself That's right. And I'll never change my music. music I can only speak for myself And I'm the realest one left I can
Yo, yo, what it is? This is your boy, former lead singer, Pretty Rick Emmanuel, and you are listening to the Stephen Knight Show right now. Don't forget to check out my new single, Forever. It's coming soon. It's going to be everywhere June 1st. Check it out, the Stephen Knight Show. You did. Welcome back to the Stephen Knight Show. Last week, we heard part one of my interview with Corn Rankin. Remember, she is the uh, African-American Republican who is a Trump supporter. Uh, you heard the first part of our conversation last week. Here's part two. So I, that so the the fact that they're doing that that they just made up this whole impeachment inquiry that's something that doesn't exist tells me that it's not going anywhere. It it, it it won't go anywhere. The whistleblower's been discredited as somebody who just is a hearsay. They've already. Released what about the second? What, what about the second nothing. whistleblower? The one that recently came out. I still, I, I still, that doesn't change my mind. Okay. Okay. So but I, I would think, because my thing is, you know, I had a professor in college and, and he was a black mm-hmm. Republican as well. May he rest in peace. Um, but oh. he told us the reason why, and I actually grew up with his sons. Um, he said the reason why he was a Republican is because he thinks, you know, most black people are Democrats. And if we, aren't part of, you know, if we're kind of left out if we're not if we're not part of what's going on. If you're not at the table, you're on yeah, the menu. Exactly. That's the, that's the that, yeah. That, yeah, that was his point. And so my thing is, you know, and, you know, I'm not a, one of those people or a lot of people think Republicans are racist, Republicans. I don't think that because I know a lot of people who are who are Republican and, you know, they're good people. Um, and you can have different, you know, policies, I think, you know, and what you believe in. But if for, if for me, if even if Barack Obama, the first black president, um, maybe a black male, if he was out here doing half of the things that Trump's doing, I could not support him. I could not uh, stand with him. And, 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 and so I just wonder, you don't struggle with that at all. Because I know a lot of Republicans, and what they say is a lot of Republicans, especially who are in, you know, in office, they um, they put, you know, in public, they, they don't speak against him. But behind closed doors, they hope he gets out. Because they feel like it's tarnished in their legacy. And so you you don't struggle with any of that? I don't. I don't. Okay. Not okay. one bit. I, 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 I will, you know, like I said, I'm an entrepreneur. So right. I, I will always support someone who just comes in from the outside and just shakes up our political system. And I feel like the more he does that, it's, it's almost like the more I like him because – I am, for one, am so tired of career politicians. I just can't stand it anymore. They will. They have just proven to to do nothing over time, but just you know. What has he done? Us, you know, add laws. <laughs> what, you know? Has he, what has he done other than embarrass our country? So, you know, I actually, I actually went to a uh, a criminal justice summit, and Van Jones was uh, one oh, yeah. of the keynote speakers okay. there. It was in Los Angeles. And, you know, even Van, he had to reluctantly, and I, I felt, I was in the front row, so I knew he was just grinding his teeth, he hated to have to say, mm-hmm. that he worked for the Obama administration, and it took eight years for them to pass, for them to even begin to act on anything even remotely related to criminal justice. Donald Trump gets into office, gets it done, and passes it within the first six months. Okay. So... This is what this is this different philosophy, this different thinking. I don't know how many friends you have that work inside the government, but uh, you know you're a businessman, you're an entrepreneur. If you want to get something done, you get it done. But once you get once you're in government, there's so many layers of bureaucracy. What yes. it takes you one week to do will take six months in government. So when you have someone from like you and like me who come into the government and they're just you know, railroading through these bureaucracies, yeah, the bureaucracies don't like it because they get paid by the hour. So the longer it takes, the better. Okay. I suppose. <laughs> I mean, I understand what you're saying, and you are right in that. But but I think that 
I don't know. And, and here's the thing: you don't have to. You don't have to like, you know, President Trump. Uh, you know, you, you, I don't have to like Democrats. But your professor was right on them. He was right. No, on I, them. I agree with that. It, but it, but it was, but it was I think failed thinking for no, I agree. I, people to think that we should all be Democrats. all Democrat. I agree. You I know, totally agree with it that. Failed. I totally agree with that, but but the problem is it's not necessarily the Republican Party. To me, it's 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 the person that's that's over the free world. You know, he has proven over and over again that he is just not fit to be president. And uh, I mean, well, the, if you want to impeach him, then you know who you know what you know what who's next in line after him. Mike Pence, yeah, but they said that they, Mike Pence. but they said but they said that he uh, might be uh, looked at as well. So then it'll be Nancy Pelosi. Yeah. <laughs> no. Well, let me let me ask that's, you this. You know what that is? That's a ribbon in the sky. That's a, that's like a no. no I agree. I agree. <laughs> but let me ask you. So, what do you think about the current uh, Democrat Democratic president candidates, presidential candidates? Is there anyone that you um, that you like, or do you think could could? And I know you're a Trump supporter, but anyone you think could beat Trump in 2020? No. <laughs> of course. No, I, <laughs> <What>? Of course. <laughs> I just don't. I mean, even Barack Obama won't. He, he even he won't endorse Joe Biden when Joe first came Not out. Yet. Uh, Not Barack yet. Barack Obama said he goes. He said you don't have to do this, Joe. He was quoted in all the papers saying, you don't have to do this, Joe. He's not supporting Joe. It's not that he's not supporting That tells you there's something wrong. He, well, Joe Biden said he Joe, asked him not to in, endorse him right away. He's, and, he's a Hillary Clinton. Nah, I disagree. He kind of, yeah. I know, you kind of know it, though. <laughs> well, listen. I like Bernie. You I, like I, Bernie? I mean, the first timer, I do. I don't, I mean, I'm, I can't. I, I, know you, I, I, I know understand that he's a socialist, but right. I feel like he's, you know, even though I completely disagree with everything that comes out of his mouth, I, I believe he's genuine and that he really believes it. Yeah, I think he's I very don't, genuine. I don't get the feeling that he's up there lying about it. Yeah, you know, how I agree. Feels. I agree. I agree. And Tulsi Gillibrand, I mean, she's she's no longer a contender, but yeah. she was pretty level-headed. She seemed like she's a sensible woman. What do you think about um, Elizabeth Warren? Because she's, you know, she's in the, one of the top Dem- the top uh, contenders. Yeah. I don't know. I don't think much of Elizabeth Warren. I think that, you know, I, I still, you know, I'm still a little bothered about the fact that she, you know, grew up and got special treatment because she said she's Native American. I, I don't think that that was right for her to do that. Uh, I think other people got left. But you can out. support Donald yeah. Trump. <laughs> no, I'm saying I can I can get past. I mean, I can get past that. Okay, it's fine. But I think that um, I, I just think she's a spaz, quite honestly. <laughs> Listen, Corey, I have definitely enjoyed talking to you. And I and you know, again, a reason why we want to join the show is is oh, I do have to ask you one more thing. I'm sorry because I know that mm-hmm. you that you um tell me tell me. Uh, Isaiah Washington, the actor. Um, I know the way that we found found more about you was through. I think you you are supportive of him and you agree with a lot of his what his thoughts. Is that correct? Can I, would you say that's accurate? So Isaiah is um, Isaiah is his, his own person. Right. We right. do agree on on a number of things. Uh, he has just for the past and, and I think he, he told his story before you should probably have him on your show because mm. he, he's got a really good story as well okay he um he, he's a big second amendment activist he, yep. he's a veteran mm-hmm. and so he just started questioning you know our political landscape uh, a few months ago he was a uh, part of the first step act uh, he was there at the White House when it took place. Mm-hmm. Um, he referred to the president as 45, so he was, you know, pretty much, uh, you know, uh, thinking along the same lines of use. He right. didn't like, you know, some of the things he hears in the media. But um, he looked past that, and he said to himself, you know, let me start talking to these, you know, Republicans slash Trump supporters and just, you know, see what they have to say and ask questions. So he spent, uh, I, I first uh, started talking to him in April. Okay. And um, so we talked a lot. He asked a lot of questions. 
Um, I answered a lot of questions from, from, you know, my perspective, but I also encouraged him to also, you know, go out and, you know, meet other people and ask them the same questions you're asking me because sometimes they'll have the same answer, sometimes they'll have a different answer. And he's just, you know, he has that in him. So he, you know, really took it on as a a mission of fact-finding and, you know, to search for answers. And so he's been spending the last five or six months uh, doing that and really just, you know, starting to, you know, discover politics and looking at both sides. And I think that one of the things that's, you know, uh, is a, a thing for him uh, for supporting this president is the First Step Act. So that's something that's near and dear to his heart as well, um, as with uh, many, many of us, and, and especially in the African-American community. I know that, uh, you know, I, well, I guess, you know, no matter, no matter what community you come from, no matter what your skin color is, we all know someone who is been to jail and yep. arrested, yeah. is in jail, you know. Uh, and so, you know, our justice system is flawed. I mean, it's not perfect. It's better than, you know, China, you know, or these other communist countries. But it, it, so it Trump wants be, to uh, it Trump, Trump wants to uh, investigate the Bidens. But go ahead, I'm sorry. <laughs> Well, <laughs> if if his son, you know, is sitting on the board for you know a Chinese oil company with no credentials, and he's you know flying over there getting one point five billion dollars, that is worthy of an investigation. But by China, it's it's that yes. Okay, okay. Well, well Isaiah, back not, to Isaiah. I'm not quite sure. Yeah. Back to Isaiah. Yeah. I'm not quite sure if you know the harm China does to our economy. But oh no, I know. But 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 how but how do you do? But how do you do put uh, tariff, you know, your tariff war with China, but then you're asking to investigate um, yeah. our former vice president's son? I, that, that makes sense to me. But back to Isaiah, we'll talk about him. So he recently tweeted, he, I guess he got into it with Soledad O'Brien on Twitter. And so his last tweet was that he is doing the work of Harriet Tubman, but better. That it is what he, do you agree that that's what he's doing? So that's completely. <laughs> Completely out of context. <laughs> oh, is it? That's what he said. <laughs> so there was a series of so there were a series of tweets before that came in. So that has that's not he he posted a picture of himself right with uh, about six other gentlemen uh-huh. and they were in the minorities were there yeah. for the, uh-huh for the for the for the black leadership summit. Right, right. And uh, he tweeted that he was proud of these gentlemen, that they were, you know, you know, mm-hmm. going to the black leadership summit and, and doing good things in their communities. And that's all he said. And so, so Dad O'Brien retweets and says, LOL, Roland Martin made some laughing faces. Mm-hmm. And then this other woman who I, I can't remember her name, mm-hmm. she posted raccoons. Mm. So, mm. you know, and... And to that degree, I just say, you know, shame on her because, you know, this this, hard, this, this goes back to what, what your professor said. We should be on both sides of the aisle. And when is that going to become taboo for us to call each other coons? Why are we allowing each other to do that? Because what? we disagree? I mean, you and I, we've had several disagreements in this conversation but right. there's no name calling exactly no neither one of us are degrading the other one there's no it's it's, it's unacceptable yeah i agree i agree with that uh, but but when, but when you have a president that's what he does all day long on twitter you know it comes from the the top down and um just like you know we're seeing all this uh the race wars in this country um you know what he say if he was impeached there's gonna be a civil war in this country you know he's the one that kind of spews this kind of thing mm-hmm. And so, you know, I know when I was growing up and we thought about the president, you know, we were proud and it was, you know, whomever, Bush, uh, uh, Bush, um, Reagan, not Reagan, whatever. Anyway, Bush, Reagan, all them, you know, we were, we were. So, oh, those, those you're not proud, you know, because so the Republican ones, you're not proud. But No, 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 no. I wasn't saying, no, I'm saying when I thought about the president overall, I don't care who was in office. That's just the respect and the degree we looked at that office but now when you see i mean talking 
I, I just don't get it. I mean, I think I think it's just all hype. I mean, at the end of the day, I I was a Democrat when Bill Clinton was president. I right. liked Bill Clinton at the time. I thought, you know, well, what's the big deal? Like that's you know what he's doing. That's between him and his wife. Right. He cheated on his wife. That's right. their marital problems. But now that I'm older and my I have a daughter who's 25 years old, so I think to myself, would I really want to you know work extra time to pay for her to be an intern in in Washington just to have the president you know do these uh, things to her? But we all what, 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 what about what I about, overlooked it? But it's you can, fun, but you, you know because the economy was great. But this president says you can you can you can grab them by the generals. Come on. I mean, so it's kind of. You know, yes, Clinton did what he did, but this this president he he paid a um, paid off a um, porn star. You know what I mean? So it's like he's not the the moral <laughs> compass of, of what you should be able to do. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that's the thing. I think I think yeah. the, who he showed that poor who, porn star and her lawyer stole all her money. Huh? She just can't catch a break. No, nah, she can't catch a break. But you know that's <laughs> that's her. That's her. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> well, anyway, I, I definitely <laughs> want to thank you. I, I think it's important, again, to have these conversations. And I think, you know, yeah. wh- whether or not you believe, you know, we agree, I think it's important to, to understand the mindset and the thought process, you know, in today's day, a black Republican, you know what I mean, especially that supports Donald Trump. So I think I want to thank you definitely for coming on and just giving your perspective and, you know, um, it's a conversation that we got to continue because, again, we are all Americans and we want this country to, to thrive. But tell everyone where they exactly. can where they can learn more about you, learn more about the um, Legacy Republican Alliance, and keep up with everything you have going on. Okay, so we have a website. It's called LegacyRepublicans.org, and you can find more out more about us on on our website. Uh, you can read up on our board members and our mission statement of what we're trying to do. Fairly soon, we'll be coming out with a list of candidates who we are supporting and helping them hopefully become elected members of their communities. Uh, we have a video on our website, and I, I just, it's just packed with information. And um, uh, yeah, please just you know feel free to, to take a look at it. And you know, I would really encourage. Um, you know, more conversations like this. Mm-hmm. Uh, don't be afraid to have them. Don't, yeah. don't be afraid to agree and disagree because I think we set a really good example here today how we can both sort of laugh about our disagreements. Right. And just remember that, you know, we're, we're, we're all in this together. You know, as far as, as black people, we all want to improve our communities. You know, when, when there are communities with poor schools, we all want to work to improve them. And don't be afraid to... Um, elect a Republican, you know, to 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 balance out the the Democrats that are on your school board or on your city council. You know, I live I live in California, so the Republicans have, um, you know, we have no presence here in, in in within the state being an elected, and our 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 you know costs are astronomical. We're going through rolling blackouts, you know, starting next Wednesday. Some some half the Half the county counties in the state will be without power for seven days. Oh wow! So I mean, you know, don't I mean, give us a try. I mean, you can't do worse than you know, no power for seven days. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Mm-hmm. Well, Corn Rakin is our guest tonight. Thank you so much for joining us again. Um, and for more information, please go to our website, thestephenishow dot com. Thank you again, and uh, we'll be right back after this. Okay, thank you.
What's up, y'all? We are June's Diary, and you're listening to The Stephen Knight Show. <laughs> Welcome back to The Stephen Knight Show. Our next guest is a marketing guru and founder of FEH Online, which provides latest in news, events for entertainment, sports, and fashion. Please help me welcome Fred Holman. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Glad to be here. Definitely Glad appreciate you. Here. So you're a busy man. Busy man got a lot going on. But let's start from the beginning. How did you get your start? And uh, tell us a little bit about your background and all that. Yeah, I, my background is um, I'm, I'm from uh, Camden, New Jersey. I came up in a family of entrepreneurs. Um, and that's how I got introduced into some of the things that I get involved with because my my family is heavily entrepreneurial spirit and uh, my background actually is, a, is a, I have a degree in engineering okay. and uh, I branch in the various different uh, avenues of, of opportunities uh, throughout my family that was presented to me as I was uh, coming up through, uh, through life. Okay, okay. So I heard the, I read the idea for FEH online came from an event that you did uh, we're working with called Joy to the World Festival. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, Joy to the World Festival was an event we did in about uh, 2008. Uh, we was working with a whole host of celebrities uh, from all around the world, and our main focus was to bring joy to the world by giving back to the community uh, things that they don't get to see on a daily basis. We gave out turkeys. We brought, um, We had a fest where people could come out do health checks. We had a big uh, thing at the convention center. We had Meek Mills down there, Young Chris. Um, we had a whole bunch of people we had in town. We had uh, Puff Daddy, Jermaine Dupree. We had a, the works, the yeah. governor, the mayor, everything else was there. And it was a big, big event in the city. Yeah. So how did, that, how did that event come together? Like, how did you get those names to uh, want to be part of this event? Well, that's it, it goes back to, a, it's a long story, it goes back to, a, my cousin uh, was friends with Puff Daddy. Okay. While they were in college. They used to throw parties together, him and Puff, before he became the big mogul that he is. So anytime Puff comes to Philadelphia or my cousin does anything in Philadelphia, Puff always would reach out to him. So he reached out to Puff with the idea, like, let's put this together. And that's how it played out. Wow. Pretty much. That's dope. Were you impressed by how big it got and how, how much you were able to do in that event? What was that again? I said, were you surprised at how big the event got and, you know, everything you were able to do? Yeah, it was it was, it was, it was a real big surprise because, you know, the way it all took place, I just one day got a phone call, hey, meet me down here at uh, this club, and next thing I know, you know, hey, we bring in Nicki Minaj in the town, this is state, we buying a club out right then and there, I'm just going to go meet somebody at a club, and next thing you know, we buying the whole club out, and then it just... Next thing after that, it just trickled, 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 and it went to the whole city. So wow. it was just like it was. It was amazing how it happened. Like it was, yeah. It was just like it, people just heard the buzz and they just jumped on it, you know. So and that's dope, especially for that was for a good cause. But but uh, yeah, it was for great. yeah, great cause, great cause. And you said this is what made you decide to create an online platform, uh, Feh Online. Dot com. Tell us, tell us uh, what sparked that idea, and and how did you know what you wanted Feh to be? Yeah, it was sparked the idea because I noticed when we was going through the whole process of the Joy to the World Fest, many people in the in in the entertainment business, even as the fans and things of that nature, they don't really get to see the behind the scenes stuff, yeah. all the work that goes into putting different events together lining up artists, lining up acts, bringing venues together. It's a lot of work. So I wanted, what came to my mind was like, I want to show the behind the scenes footage. I want to get all this and make a documentary out of it. And then after, after you know, I sat down and thought about it, I was like, you know what? We could become like a media company and we could present different, uh, different venues, different people, streams, everything we could combine together and we could br- bring it to the people in a mass volume and just let them see what happens on a day-to-day basis and keep them informed of what's going on in the entertainment, sports, and fashion uh, world. Yeah, yeah. And I was, I'm on the, uh, the site right now. I mean, you all do it all. Tell us, how would you de- best describe FEH Online? Tell us about some of the services that you all do. 
Yeah, well, I would best describe FBH Online as a um, a multimedia company where we uh, go out to various events as well as uh, we sometimes host events and we create behind the behind the scenes footage for uh, presentation to some of our followers as well as uh, work with advertisers that want to get involved to be on our website. So some of the services that we offer, we market events, we align artists with different venues or different uh, events we have coming up, and pretty much uh, we, we, we brand uh, various events that we work with, and we can, do, we can bring in photographers and videographers to capture everything and put together a nice compelling video for our fans and online followers. Most definitely. And talk about it, because you know that a lot of people in the industry or are trying to come up in the industry, whether it be music or fashion, and they don't really understand the importance of marketing. They you know, they have the talent or they have the, the drive, but they don't understand, you know, how important marketing is and, you know, doing it in a, in a way that grabs people's attention. Tell us the importance of that and and why that, you know, why that's important for someone who's trying to do this. I believe marketing is a, is one of the most key aspects of of uh, being in, in the industry, and the number one reason why I say it's it's important is because you gotta you gotta be creative and you gotta get people involved. Um, you know, marketing has been here since the beginning of times, mm-hmm. and um, you know, to to draw people in to let them know what you're doing so that they can always keep their their uh, mind or or their brains stimulated to always look for something, some nice marketing concept that you could bring to the table because people are always looking for something new. So the, the reason why I say it's important is because it helps, it helps you grow, whether you're an artist or whether you're a business, it helps you grow your base and it helps you stay relevant in whatever you're doing. Yeah. If you look at McDonald's, Burger King, they're always marketing. Oh, and they're yeah. some of the biggest in the world so you know they want to stay in your face they want to present the new modern day uh challenges or various like events that's going on former commercial and just keep the brand out there and visible to to uh you know help grow it and then bring awareness to it right 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 you have a section on on the website called who's next can you talk about that yeah the section on the on website that says who's next that's for up and coming artists that that may be known in their local city but aren't known uh, globally. Uh, so that that section of my website is for any up and coming artists that are looking to post their videos on there. Uh, we're looking for up and coming talent. It could be from Philadelphia, New York. It could be from Miami, Texas, wherever it's from. We're just always looking to feature a new up and coming artist with some dope music on there. So that we can feel the vibe, our followers can feel the vibe, and hopefully, you know, somebody that because on our on my website we have a lot of uh, we have a lot of people that pay it that that can make you know that watch what we do that they are influencers they can make phone calls right. you know what I'm saying yeah. so they might be they may look at the website and say oh well who is this you know and they they reach out hey let's get in touch let's bring this artist here and there so that's what that whole who's next. Uh, okay our website is for and talk about the fashion the fashion part of the website yeah the fashion part of the website I have a I work with a blogger her name is Daniela Blogger and pretty much you know she covers all the fashion all the new trends that's coming out all the stylish events that's coming out Um, we pretty much try to capture all the latest and greatest um, fashion and trend styles and things of that nature. So you may any day you may see somebody up there with the new, the new, uh, the new Fendi's or the new dresses or the new, you know, the new style right. wear that's going on. He keeps that current and keeps it moving for us so that we can always be in touch with uh, new, new fashion trends. Okay, it's dope. And sometimes that's good because you know people sometimes are looking to see what's the latest. You know what they don't. You know they're trying to be up to date, but they don't know where to go. So that's a good source to have. And uh, what's yeah, talk, what's that about um, um, FEH TV? Yeah, FEH TV is pretty much like I said. It's a it's a behind the scenes type of thing where we go out and we capture uh, just live events. You know whether yeah. it be 
we could just say, hey, let's let's get with let's get with the new latest up and coming artists, and let's go on a sneaker sneaker shop with them, and you know we'll go around take the sneaker shop, we'll film it, we'll put it up on FBH TV. So that's just that's our TV channel where we whatever we film in house. And and we 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 actually film the in house, edit it, then we put it on the FBH TV so that you can see what is going on. So it could be any type of event, whether it's behind the scenes at a music concert, it could be us featuring an artist interview, it could be us just anywhere doing some anything. But I am looking to bring on some TV shows or some uh some creative ideas that somebody out there is actually working on, so that we can feature their their uh episodes or whatever they have going on on a weekly basis as well that's dope that's dope so if someone wants to work with work with you what's the best way to reach out and get in contact the best way to reach out to me is you always can uh reach out to me um via email which is f-e-h global at gmail.com or you can personally uh reach out or text me at 856-264-3154 um, that's the best way to get at me, or you can uh, inbox us on Instagram at FBH underscore online. So that's anywhere right. you need to, they can reach out to us. Most definitely, most definitely. So where do you see uh, FBH online ultimately becoming? Yeah, I see I see FBH online eventually uh, in a few years. I would like to I would like to see. FBH on a scale of an uh, Essence Festival, you know, you, okay, come, yeah. you, come to, uh, you come in the field up here, we got all t- type of events going on, we got all great people aligned with each other and just having a good time, bringing a positive, productive movement together, and all of it documented, filmed, and put on TV, you know, that that's what my ultimate target is, is to, to have an FBH online festival at the compare in Philadelphia at the same level as the Essence Festival, that's where I would like to this company grow. Well, I know that's definitely going to happen. It's definitely going to happen. I want to thank you, man, for joining us tonight and telling us all about FEHonline.com. Uh, I mean, I'm, I, like I said, I'm on the website right now and it's a lot of great content, a lot of great information. So, uh, thank you for taking time out to schedule and join us tonight. Thank you very much. I appreciate you for having us and if you need any of our help, we're here for you. Open arms, video, film, whatever we got to do, we can make it work. Most definitely, most definitely. Well, listen, y'all, our thanks goes out to Fred Holman for joining us tonight. Again, FEHonline.com. Check it out. For more information, go to our website, the Stephen I Show.com. We'll be right back after this.
Stephen Knight Show. Adam, how's it going? It's going well. How about you? I cannot complain, cannot complain. I'll let you in. Uh, well, first of all, how was your weekend? 
Uh, it was good. Uh, just kind of stayed in. It rained all day yesterday up here, so there wasn't really much to do out and about. But then uh, we, we made the best of them Saturday. Okay, good. I'm going to ask you this because I know you're a foodie. Our question of the day is, what's something you could eat every day? What's something you could eat every day? Something I can eat every day. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's a good question. <laughs> it had to be the exact same item. Yeah, if you had to. Uh, you know, I really do. So it's funny. I was, um, uh, uh, I eat a lot of hummus Okay. all the time. Okay. So like we always buy the packages and I go through them. Uh, so something I can eat every day. Well, what I almost do every day is chips and hummus. Okay. But, uh, as a main dish, I don't know. I think I could eat chili every day. I really do like a good chili. Okay. So good answer. Good answer. All right. Well, I'll let you in a uh, cheeky takeaway with uh, movie reviews. Sure thing. So I actually saw The Laundromat, which was a movie that Netflix, it's a Netflix film that was actually released in theaters a couple weeks ago. And this past weekend, they released it on the streaming platform. And it stars uh, a whole cast of famous actors, Meryl Streep, Gary Oldman, David Schwimmer, um, Antonio Banderas. And it follows kind of a story of the Panama Papers. And for those who don't remember, the Panama Papers were this whole big whistleblower incident of documents over millions, I think 11 million documents that were revealed and released showing how these, this law firm, Mossack and, um, I can't remember the name of the other uh, person, um, Oh, Fonesca, Fonseca took and helped rich people and organizations throughout the world set up shell corporations all over the place. And um, it was a big fallout. And of course, you know, everyone from famous people to politicians to royalty, everyone was kind of involved in this whole scheme. And this movie takes an angle that kind of looks into more of the the tax implications and the shell game and things like that involved with it. And it is directed by uh, Steven Soderberg, Soderberg, who did the Oceans trilogy and other kind of heist movies. And it starts with following kind of the story of one of the characters and then into them looking into kind of an insurance claim that became an insurance fraud, not fraud per se, but something that was sold to other companies that was sold to other companies, sold to other companies. So overall though, I I will say this, uh, it follows a similar style to the big short. And if you remember that movie from a a few years ago, it was a movie that kind of focused on the financial crisis and the recession in 2007, 2008. So it has that kind of feel to it. It doesn't dig deep into the Panama Papers uh, and the whistleblower and more of the fallout. It more kind of gives you almost a few little stories that focus on what happened during this time period. Um, overall, I, I, it, was, it was good. I saw the two. Sorry. I'm sorry. I saw the two, Adam, and I thought that it was more of a basically of telling you how it happened. Not Mm -hmm. necessarily why or what, but, like, how it happened. How, like, the question of, remember when she says in the movie, um, how could this happen to me? And then that's when they go into how it can happen. This is what goes on. I thought it was very, very um, enlightening and educational because how else would you know unless someone took it apart like they did in the movie to tell you what happened to your money? Yeah, yeah. It, I mean, I, I will. I do recommend this for anyone, um, especially since it's on Netflix. So you can watch it at any time. But it it does show you how it's done and how it's still done by several corporations, several law firms, and how you know all the money's kind of shuffled around and how kind of the the little people or the meek, as they kind of say it in the movie, mm-hmm. are the ones that are screwed over. And you really don't know who's in charge of what. And it is almost like kind of the, the financial crisis 
and the uh, recession where all these mortgages were being sold around and shuffled around to different companies and no one knew who to pay or what payment went where because the companies either didn't exist or they sold it off and went somewhere else. So um, I was hoping for maybe a little more of kind of in-depth of the, the Panama paper or the fallout or a little more into that, but it, I mean, it does do a good job of, again, following the, the Mossack Fonseca law firm in Panama City, Panama, and their involvement into this whole incident. And 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 I know that it, it sounds, the, the weight of it is heavy, the gravity of it is heavy, but it's actually kind of amusing. Like, it, I laughed a few times. It, it's, mm-hmm. not, it's not as severe as, you know, the subject matter leads to. Yeah, again, again, it's it's kind of it follows that big short style of uh, film where mm-hmm. it's going to teach you about things, but also have some kind of comedy tidbits, but also be abrupt into kind of explaining things out for you uh, along the way. Yeah. Did you see anything else? No, that was all I had the time for this weekend, unfortunately. Okay, I actually went uh, last week. Uh, to a premiere, a Philadelphia premiere of director Joshua Coates. And I, I have to say this. I've been stalking Joshua Coates for a couple of years. Uh, we are connected through social media. He's a filmmaker uh, from my area, and the brother stays so busy that I could just never catch up with him. So finally, he has a movie that he's releasing, and he wanted to do a Philadelphia release. It's called Hollywood. Wood spelled W-O-U-L-D. And um, it stars, the film stars Eric Roberts, Tere Hart, uh, Pete Postiglione, and Caitlin Fletcher. And I have to give a shout out to my friend, uh, Cornell Dex Butler. He's the one with the plug, so he connected me, and I finally was able to go to this premiere to see this masterpiece of a film. Um, You know, we both know, we love indie art. It's it's something about Mm -hmm. the indie world. You know, it's the low budget brings out the feeling in the heart. <laughs> Not that there is a feeling in heart in, in big budget films, but you require so much more of it in these indie movies because you're so heart filled from the lack of funds. Just saying. Um, mm-hmm. But anyway, uh, Hollywood is a look into mental illness, um, sudden fame, and drug addiction. I cannot explain to you on how many levels um, this movie impacted. Because it was done so raw and it was such a great level of imagination, um, I was blown away by it. And the author, um, his name is Mitchell, Mitchell Bass. That's I'm sorry, Mitchell Bass. And Mitchell Bass wrote a poem, and in his poem called The Conductor, um, Joshua Coates basically made the screenplay out of his poem, and it turned out to be this beautiful movie. If you can catch it, it's playing in Philadelphia now. Well, Brent, the Bryn Mawr uh, Film Institute now. If you're in the area, check it out. Uh, I'm not quite sure how long it's going to be there, but it started last Wednesday. I'm sure it probably plays in through through the week. Um, so check it out. And um, if it comes to your area, definitely check it out. Look him up, Joshua Coates. I give this movie five stars. Um, I'm starting to like what I'm seeing about uh, mental illness in media and in films lately because it's really shedding a light on things. Um, just coming off of you know the Joker and the strong, powerful message in that movie, mm-hmm. and now watching Hollywood, it's like, oh wow, okay, people are really talking about this now. This is um, for godsend, honestly, for the education. So yeah, definitely check him out. Joshua Coates, Hollywood. Do you think? Um, and I don't. I don't know if anyone um, brought it up to the the director, the producers. But do you think they'll be able to put it like on a paid streaming thing, or is there are is there any any plan oh, to I, kind of help a wider audience get to it that may not be able to make it to the theater? I'm sure. Uh, honestly, I interviewed him, and that was a question that I did not ask him what was the next step. Because normally, 
Adam, you know as well as I do. I mean, you act. Yeah. You, you've dealt in production. When you put something out there, it's almost like you have to wait and see what's going to happen, and then you can mm-hmm. take a direction from what you what you receive from it. So if it gets, you know, a, a, a big influx of attention, then it'll probably stay within the circuit of theaters and maybe most mm-hmm. maybe multiple theaters. I mean, if you look at the diagram of a film like, let's say, Blair Witch Project, which was an indie film, it started off pretty much just like this movie Hollywood did, but the marketing, their marketing strategy was so brilliant of how they marketed like it was a true story. It grew into this monster of a mega film that sold like billions of dollars worldwide. So that's a phenomenon. Um, it does mm-hmm. happen, but it's rare. Um, so yeah, you never know until you know. You have to wait and see. You have to try a screening. And then one screening turns into two, and then so on and so forth. So yeah, if you go well, see it and you check it out, what happens. yeah, yeah. So I mean, I will keep you posted and let you know what's going on. Um, if it does get on any streaming thing, you know, I'll support it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'll let you guys know. Yeah, awesome. Thank you. Um, anything on TV? No. So um, I, well, so I, I I shouldn't say no. What? Uh, so we're finished with the wedding. So we have started with the massive undertaking of watching The Sopranos, which neither of us have ever seen. <laughs> so yeah. yeah, so that'll be the big. That's the big. That's the big thing for the next, I guess, few months or a few weeks, depending on how fast we watch it. Okay. But yeah. But um, definitely but so keep far, us updated because you know that there's speculation that there's going to be a Sopranos movie. So this yeah, yeah, that's what I heard. So I want to power through it, and I mean, it's 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 nice because I we, we've never seen a single episode before we started watching it, so we know nothing besides you know what you hear about it in mainstream like pop culture. So um, I will say, season one, it's interesting to see the '90s because this is like 20 years ago. It's it's just it's a it was a different style, a different fashion, a different you know the cars all looked like cars. It just it's a very different world to see it even just 20 years ago. So that that's been a kind of a nice little uh, addition to just the normal stuff uh, from the storyline. Well, I dove into HBO's new uh, series uh, just started last night, um, of Regina King Watchmen and oh. the Watchmen. Oh, how delicious it was. I cannot wait to absorb this show. This is going to be one of those ones that, you know, you're sitting on the edge waiting for it to start every Sunday. It's one of them. Nice. I can't yeah. wait for that then. Yeah. And I forgot, let's go back to the laundromat. Uh, Steven, you said you saw that too. I did, right? yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Our friend and friend of the show, uh, Miriam Hyman, A.K.A. Robin Hood is oh, in yeah. that movie. Okay, okay. She she plays um, Jeffrey Wright's wife that meets him at the airport. Okay. So next time you watch it or you see it, you'll see our friend. Oh, the one who uh, um, they arrest his husband. Yes. Oh, okay. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. All cool. right. Um, I started watching the yeah. the politician to uh, earlier today, so. It, it, oh, it's that is so hilarious! It is, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is. Anyway. That's a good series. All right. So Any, yeah, anything else? Um, so I'm um, just looking forward to. Um, I want to see uh, Doctor Sleep. I'm really interested in that. I'm, I'm ready to see what happens after The Shining. Okay. Nice. I yeah. I so I, I one movie I did want to try to catch this weekend. I didn't get a chance to, but uh, there were only in eight theaters and. It's expanding. It's the lighthouse, and this is this kind of weird one with Robert Pattinson and William uh, Willem Dafoe. Um, that's high on my list, and I also want to. Everyone's been talking about this movie Parasite. I don't know if you've heard anything about it, Chike, but it's about it's a it's a Korean movie, South Korean movie, um, and it sounds like it's they're billing it as like a drama comedy. Um, but it seems like a very interesting movie. So th- those are the two on my immediate list. I have seen uh, billboards for that. Uh, I-, I may check that one out. But The Lighthouse, I'm going to be honest and say I'm interested and I'm very intrigued to let you watch that and then you can tell me if it's worth watching or not. It's something about it is like, eh, I don't want to, but I'm compelled, but I don't want to. 
Yeah, exactly. I, I, yeah, it's going to be one of those, I think at the end, I'm going to be like, what did I just watch? Uh, so <laughs> hopefully, hopefully, it, hopefully it's good, but it is definitely the trailers don't give you anything to go off of, except for that it's a weird, discombobulated film, but I'm sure there's more to that than that, hopefully. Oh, man. All right, guys. Well, as always, thank you for letting us know what to spend our money on, what not to, and hope you all have a great week. You too. All right, all right, right back after this. on you I'm giving up hey love this will be the last time I'll be addressing this conversation what you told all the lying and the cheating and your smiles were just The Stephen Knight Show. Janera, how's it going? I'm doing good. How are you, Stephen? I cannot complain. Cannot complain. How was your weekend? I can't complain about that either. All right. I went to a nice wedding. A friend of mine got married oh, yesterday. Nice. So nice. I that took the day nice. off. Yeah, yeah, that's good. That's good. <laughs> well, then you got some good things. First of all, let's recap your new website because um, you did some rebranding. Tell everybody about it, those who may have missed it last week. Right. Uh, so I have a new site, and it's called uh, GenGenuinely.com, um, and that's how you can access me. Um, and, of course, I just talk about all things lifestyle. So I, I still talk about sales and fashion, yeah. um, but I don't just talk about that anymore. I used to only talk about that. Now I talk about some of everything. Exactly. Um, I try, I'm trying to get people prepared for, like I did one article on trying to get people prepared for Christmas, just making sure that they're prepared for, you know, prepared financially, prepared in their home, mm -hmm. um, just everything. So I, I, I talk about some of everything you'll, you'll see. You'll see. Yeah, you, check you, it you out. Check me out. It's a great yeah, website. And I'm also too. going to be, oh, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I'm, I'm going to be doing a giveaway uh, sometime next week. Oh. So you guys just have to stay tuned. And yeah. Uh, yeah. Sounds so I'm excited great. about that. Yeah. GenGenuinely.com. So everybody check it out. Gen that's right. Thank you. <laughs> well, what do you have for us this week? 
Um, so I have a couple of things, like I always do, uh, a couple of great sales, but we are in between holidays. Uh, the last, of course, last week was Columbus Day, and then the next big shopping holiday, rather, is going to be Veterans Day. So we're in between holidays, but I still found a lot of great stuff for you. It's not as, uh, it's not as, uh, the savings aren't as great as I would like for them to be, but I'm still going to be able to save you money if you want to get out there and shop this week. Nice, nice. So um, I'm going to start off with Overstock. Um, Overstock.com is having their 20th anniversary sale. So if you shop there now, you can get 20% off of select items. Uh, the Children's Place, of course, I have to talk about the kitties because of my kid. Um, they're having a sale, and if you shop there now, you can get 60% off of everything in the store and online. Um, Groupon, which is one of my favorite places to go for deals around my city, um, Groupon is having a sale, and if you shop there now, you can get an extra 20% off of tons of deals. You just have to use code SAVE at checkout. Uh, Banana Republic is having a sale, um, and they're giving you 40% off of your entire purchase, so that's everything that includes regular price items, sale items, and clearance items. Um, and if you're shopping online, line, you need to use code STYLE at checkout. Uh, Bath & Body Works is having a sale, and if you shop there now, you can get 50% off of off of select items in the store and online. Uh, White House Black Market. I don't off, don't usually talk about them because they don't usually have much, much savings, but this time they do. <laughs> um, <laughs> so if you shop there now, you can get up to 40% off of select items. Uh, here's my favorite sale of the day, uh, Forever 21. Um, of course, we all know this is, a, this is like one of those less expensive, trendy stores, um, and a lot of younger people go, I, I'm not consider myself to be young, but I still go there. <laughs> um, want, but they're having a sale for every twenty one, and they're having and, and and you can get the, a lot of their sale items starting at just three dollars. Oh wow! So that's why I wanted to highlight that sale because it's tons of things that you can get for just three dollars. And I don't know if anyone, if you guys have ever, or I know you probably haven't, Stephen, but if, wow. <laughs> if anyone listening has ever been inside of a Forever Twenty One, when they have a sale, they have a sale, and they just throw tons of things on the sale rack. I don't even know how to keep keep up with everything. But you can get a lot of that stuff for just three dollars. So I don't think you can really beat that. Oh nice. Um Lucky yeah, Lucky Brand Jeans is having a sale and if you shop there now you can get fifty up to fifty percent off of select items. Express is having a BOGO sale so you can buy one, get one, fifty percent off on all of their jeans. A uh, Gap Factory is also having a sale and if you shop there now you can get up to seventy percent off of select of uh, off of all Sell items. Plus, you can get an extra forty percent off of their um, online items. So, if you're shopping online, you can get an extra forty percent off. Uh, Target is giving everyone twenty, giving everyone twenty five percent off of select bed, bed and bath items. Uh, True Religion is having a sale, and if you shop there now, you can get an extra twenty percent off of all sale purchase, off of all sale prices. Um, and you just have to use uh, code extra twenty if you're shopping online. Shutterfly, which is one of my favorite keepsake stores, they're having a sale, and if you shop there now, you can get 50% off of almost everything on, in their online store. And of course, Shutterfly is online only, um, so up to 50, uh, almost 50% off. Uh, I'm sorry, 50% off of almost everything. Plus, you're get you, they're giving away a free 8x8 eight eight photo book with no purchase necessary. Uh, today is the last day to shop Saks Fifth Avenue and get an extra. Not not office, not the outlet, outlet store, but the actual Saks Fifth Avenue, and get an extra 20% off of select sale items. Um, and last but not least, another one for the kitties, um, Oshkosh is having a sale, and if you shop there now, you can get up to 50% off of your purchase. Nice, nice. You can find all this at jengenuinely.com. Thank you, as always, Janera, for keeping us in the know, and uh, have a great week. It is my pleasure. You're so welcome, and you do the same. All right. Right back after this.
clear. See, you're the one I hold dear. No worries, ain't got no fears. It's everything that you do. It proves why I chose you. To the Stephen Knight Show, Aaron Cosby. How's it going? What's going on, Stephen Knight? I am up in the streets, man. Yeah. Yes. Sir. How was the weekend? Hard is working, man. Man, it was all right. Okay. Um. Yeah, I studied as I always do. Yeah. Watch some, watch some, um, some fo- football games. And, um, yeah, that's it. Okay. That's it. Right. What about you? I had family in town, so I hung out with them. And then, uh, Ty, you know, Ty, his brother was in town, too, for his birthday. So I hung out with him, too. So I was kind of split. But, yeah, it was good. Oh, it was a good weekend. Okay, good. Yeah. Good, good, good. Well, go ahead and take over the sports. All right, cool, cool, cool. Um, well, the Falcons still suck. Yeah. I repeat, the Atlanta Falcons still suck. Yep. They lost. They lost. 37 to 10. They did. To the Rams. And they did. Yeah, they did. And I just think that this this 28 to 3 curse is just going to be with them for a long time. Continue to haunt them. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think because if you recall, I had said this a while ago that now it's going to be mental. Uh huh. I mean, because they are talented. Now, also, there are injuries. Like, there are a lot of players hurt and everything. But this team, it's just mental. Like, a lot of it's mental. And they, it, I don't, like, bro, to me, it's like after that loss. In the Super Bowl, like they just never been the same. Like they just have not been the same. Right. Yeah. And it's and it's and it's gotten worse. Like it seems like it just gets worse and worse and worse. So Matt Ryan's hurt now. Yeah, I heard. But I, heard, I read that it's supposed to not be that uh that bad. It's not gonna be as bad as they thought it was gonna be. Okay. We'll see. Good. I mean, you know, we'll we'll see. Right. Um, I think that Matt Ryan's best years are behind him. Yeah. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if in the next maybe two years or so, 
the that the Falcons might end up trying to you know get another quarterback or something like maybe you know draft another quarterback. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's just not working. Like it, it's just something's off. Something's just off with the side. It's just something's off. So anyway, all right. The final two teams for the World Series: the Washington Nationals, yeah, and the Houston Astros. Who's gonna win it? I got the um, Nash, the the um, Nationals winning, man. Like, okay. I want the Nationals to win. Absolutely, absolutely. Which means. <laughs> starts tomorrow. Yes, yes it does. Yes it does. And um, I will be watching bits and pieces of it. I'm not going to watch it all the way through because I just don't like baseball. That, right. Exactly. That, but, but I will watch it bits and pieces. Um, game six of the ALCS with the um, Astros and the um, Yankees. That ah. was an epic game. I don't know if Heard about that game? Uh uh-uh, uh, I didn't pay attention. But anyway, it was it was it was epic. I'll just say that it was one it for was, the books. That was a great baseball. Bro, <laughs> that was a baseball game. And again, I'm not a baseball watcher like that. But right. It was a great game. It was it was it was exciting. It was, it was it was a great game. So again, tomorrow night we got who playing? Mr. Knight, tell him. He said that. Uh, uh, you said the uh, Nationals and the Astros. Tomorrow night. 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Watch it, y'all. Watch it. This is going to be a great series. Watch it, watch it, watch it. All right. Lastly, I want to talk about a team that I just really adore, man. I, I, I really adore this team, man. The Baltimore Ravens, like they. Oh yeah, we already know that. <laughs> they, they right, right, but they went up to Seattle, and they put it on. They won't play him. They went up there and and beat them. Like, and, <laughs> and it it was a great win. It wasn't like it was like a last minute field goal, right? You know, nothing like that. Like they beat them. Like they handed it to them, and a lot of people thought that they were going to lose to the Seahawks. Mm-hmm. Russell, we- Russell, Westbrook. Russell Wilson's going to beat Lamar Jackson. All right, yeah. Their Ravens defense can't handle the offense of of the Seahawks, bro. They went in there. And they were steady. And they did, yeah. So 30-16, yep. Mm-hmm. Right, right, right. So, kudos again to them. Great, great, great. And they have the um, number one record in the AFC North, better than um, Cleveland. Okay. You know, people, you, you do remember people talking about Cleveland was going to be the the team. The team to, to beat. This year, and they're not. But the Ravens, they, they said it's going to be them. <laughs> it's them for now. Right, 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 exactly. That's exactly. what's up. So, all right, Ravens. Yeah, <laughs> same way. That's all that I have in sports and stuff, so. All right. Well, Aaron, as always, we thank you for keeping us in the know when it comes to sports. I hope you have a great week. Same, same, man. Same. Thank you so much. Same to you. All right. Right back after this. song about how I hate you, about how you played me and led me to believe that you want me but you just not ready, so I'll wait around for your ass, yeah I'm crazy, but truth is I love you and I don't know why, it's probably the way you look me in my eyes, and you such a Pisces, yeah you put me on, and you put me in my place when I'm too much. I need that Just one time in my life Don't need no yes man This one nigga in my life He's fucking honest 
I love him cause he's everything I wanted I need that, I need that Baby, I'm forgiving you Can we move on? Can we try this? Cause I don't know what I'm gonna do without you Baby, I can talk about the lack of communication How often you make me feel unappreciated How I could have been out tonight hanging with my girls But I'm with your ass all night cause that's what I prefer But truth is I love you and now I know why It's the way your hands fit perfectly in mine And you such a Pisces, yeah you put me on And you put me in my place when I'm too much I need that Just one time in my life, don't need no yes man This one nigga in my life, he's fucking honest I love him cause he's everything I wanted I need that, I need that Baby, I'm forgiving you Can we move on? Can we try this? Cause I don't know what I'm gonna do without you I need that, I need that Baby, I'm forgiving you Hey, this is your girl Melody Holt from Love and Marriage Huntsville, and you are listening to the Stephen Knight Show. Well, that's our show. I want to thank you so much for tuning in tonight. Special shout out to Fred Holman and Corin Rankin for joining us tonight. Wish you a great week. Talk to you again next Monday. Peace and good night.